in August 2012. The creators of Four Shadows, the Ghosts of Zero, descended upon Gen Con Indy and gulled scores of innocent con-goers to dance to their music and read their stories out loud. Can you hear me? Nice and clear, right? Right inside your head. They call me Flash. It started as mockery, cheering because my lame right side makes me limp, always dragging my right arm and leg behind me, half my body too wasted to keep up with the rest. Watching me hurry across a small room is a hilarity of slow, stumbling, clumsy, Flash indeed. It was my own brother who first started calling me Flash. Don't you believe me? Don't believe a foot-dragging cripple can take down a tall, strong, handsome, and square-jawed anal gape. Well, think again. My brother was Mark Steelweather. Yes, that's Mark Steelweather, leader of the politician, wealthiest young asset of Steelweather industry. Trend-setting sponsor of hundreds of popular bids and practitioner of thousands, some of them willing, that Mark Steelweather. You know him. The Galacast and proximity ads and all the buzz, so you know how we die. Or rather, the mystery of how we die. Enjoy, Mark. Enjoy your waiting and richly earned grave. That's why you have to die. Not because you're the handsome one with all the power and I'm the wasted crypt you keep hidden away and exploit. I'm used to that. I grew up with that. You have to die because you tried to worm my secrets out of me this way. Concerning this temptress, letting me dare to finally love and hope. Even for one fleeting moment, someone could love me back. You treated me not just like a slave, but as a toy. Well, this toy bites back. Good riddance, Mark. I only wish they had come soon. Before you had a hand in causing the second one, for instance. So why am I telling you this? Am I a fool for to admit this murder to you? Not at all. I managed to keep the sadness off my face if she got close enough to kiss me. But she was either a star for skin as I was, or a much, much better actor than I'll ever be. <laughs> and I did my steel weather best to give her the ride of her life, using my mouth more than my fingers. And actress or not, by her fast and shuddering sobs and her fingernails sticking into me, she did enjoy it. A lot. Not even flinching when I flew on her backside with my wasted arm. Also, I gave her a chance. Confirm or deny, hang yourself or set me free. My nails were in her by then. I could stop in an instant if I had to, but I didn't want to. Once she learned my secret, she would have to die. Receiving telemetry, Adam. Your cipher signal is strong. Lock is complete. All that you know, I know. Make sure you record copies for our files as well. I don't want Manila PD to be the only ones with a record. Are my thoughts clear, by the way? Of course, Adam. And yes, I can move perfectly. Beginning legal transcription now. Uh, the stench is overpowering. Hold on. I need to de decrease my sensory enhancers. You never smell the insides of a human body, consider yourself lucky. This isn't pleasant. Stepping into one isn't all that fun either. Focus. Thermal X imaging online. Numerous targets. This is mind numbing. How can adults do these things to children? Temperature steady is 35 degrees Celsius. You want me to call you simulacrum? That doesn't exactly sound feminine. I am not feminine, nor am I masculine. I am an artificial intelligence. I inhabit a simulacrum. Nothing more, nothing less. I can't call you simulacrum. I cannot love you, Adam. I cannot be anything other than what I am. However, if you, however, if you wish to provide me with some type of feminization, perhaps we can reach an understanding. An understanding? Yes, you may call me a simulacra. Simulacra? Fine. Whatever, I think it sucks. You are human, Adam. I am simulacra. I do not care what you think. When I first got my plugs and implants, they were state-of-the-art. These days, though, they're more state of decay. Ever read about the 20th century? My grandfather always said computers were like cars. They were all built to become obsolete within a couple of years, so they'd either have to be constantly repaired or get replaced. It was all about getting the consumer to spend more money. Do I need to bring back the girl, I asked, or just the artifact? We would prefer 
Gage said that you come back with both. He gave me the information I needed to make the payoff and the dub to you to do it with. You don't want me to negotiate? I asked. The price has been agreed upon, he said. All you need to do is pay it and retrieve the merchandise. The creature lifted its head and watched the star a moment longer, soaking in the ray that ever present ultraviolet before the solar shape melted completely from sight. The creature had come to think of it as the golden one because it was fond of the star's earthly hue. A healthy sun, but a damaged sunset, and the sunrise was much to say. The bullets hit before Marco even heard the guns that fired them. The first one slammed into the back of his shoulder as he ran. You get what you pay for, and corporate did not want a Frankenstein. He had a scruffy face, and wore a dirty bathroom. A cigarette dangled out of his mouth, and in one hand he held a mug filled with something hot. In the other, he'd have a surgical bone scalpel slick with blood. Dying shouldn't be this easy, he thought. He knew the medicines, the best this world could offer, were doing their job well, coursing through a system as furiously as a mysterious pathogen itself. A gust of wind, too warm for November, rustled Frederick's coat, and sent leaves swirling into the air. New York sky was still grim. He looked to the south, where the scarcer trees revealed more of the cemetery landscape. Mausoleums and statues filled his view, some of them shattered, littering the ground like broken teeth. She was a respectable woman, as educated as her circumstances allowed. Now she was a thief. Her shirt and coat were spattered with blood, and it wasn't hers. She hurried across the bridge, looking back every few seconds. Cracked piece of junk crab. It was hard to argue with it with John Thero. The three of us had made it out fine, but we were now staring at our broken ride, black smoke trailing from the wreckage high into the gray Colorado sky. Streaks of oil covering portions of the craft and obscuring its name, Avenger 16. At least we made it this far, I suggested feebly. Ignoring my comment, the rule brushed dark hair away from his face. Can it be fixed? I hate the unders. Not the people. Got nothing against the people. Or at least most of them stuck down here in the place. I hate everything about it. It's all grime and shadows, the others. The locks and the tubes are cracked and still made of concrete. Yeah, concrete. Even breathing's nasty, with the spillage leaking from above, and God knows what sort of old waste leaching up from below. And even if you can see past the tubes crossing overhead, you can never see the sky. Just the glass facades of the ivory stretching up higher than people here could ever hope to imagine. Yeah, it's depressing is what it is. I don't like being here. I don't like driving through the ivory. And I'd never come down here at all if Pachinko wasn't so generous to his employees. I stepped around the corner, coming up on the spot where one of the company heads was supposed to be parked and waiting. And there it was all right. Emmanuel Motors Huacha 223 with electric purple polymer wheels, snow white chassis, and two big, ugly, mean looking guys hovering around it. One of them was standing lookout, the other prying at the bike's wheel locks with a beat up crowbar. A flying insect, capable of going anywhere, defying gravity with a pair of dusty wings. And what does it do with this power? It picks the brightest thing it can find and dives into it. It can't resist the lure of the flat flames, even though that beauty will surely leave it a charred corpse. The final piece of the staff of Urakala hung in the center of the chamber, its pale glow, the only source of illumination the great gave. Spiders watched from the walls, their eyes gleaming. There was no bridge, and seemingly no bottom to the cavern, just a tapestry of thick webs. Patel hesitated at the edge. Brave as he was, even he was uncertain about trusting his life to so fragile a friend. The molten blood of the Mordor steamed as it flowed over the flagstones. The paladin leapt over the foul corpse and knelt by the chest it was guarding. The lock was a curious puzzle. Three interlocking dials marked with golden hieroglyphs. Patel began twisting the wheels, searching for the magic of the Ever see the mask of the Red Death? That's what the Geist is like. Some sort of vector of humanity's sins come to punish us all, bit by bit, grid by grid. 
eating away at our science. Yeah, sure it is. It's the ghost of Christmas future with a weapons upgrade. So like. Perimeter's clear, so now what? Now what? Have an opinion? Have thought irritably? An idea? A course of action? Something? Anything? Oh, the vids are way off. And the geist is real. It's just not what you think it is. A demon? Are you kidding me? It's just a sin. What animal moves like that? His mind was back in the present, in his hotel room, alone in the dark. But his adrenaline was surging, his mind racing. It was time to begin again. He jumped up, hit the lights, and started to think as he rummaged through his things. He needed to arm up. Then he paused, looking at the beast that clutched in his white knuckle fist. Was this just an illusion? The first step of renewed pirate dependency? Gav was going to stop it, as he intended. Two years ago, he stalemated the monster in Germany. But where the damn thing was right now, Gav had no idea. And he didn't much care. He was through playing cat and mouse game. He proved to himself that he could track it, as no one else could. Ask any room full of people about the Geist, and you'll get an array of answers. So what does the Geist do? This is one thing everyone generally agrees on. For those who believe it actually exists, it swoops down on buildings or machines and sucks them dry, killing the power and slagging local systems. Sure, there are Geist hunters out there, just like there's some conspiracy theories and sci-fi wackos. But even those who aren't nut jobs are usually ineffective. It's a part-time hobby for them, at least. Men det forstod det gamle nordiske sprog perfekt. Alene imod de 3237 andre sprog, der var i det gamle worldnet. At disse forstod den kun 2072. Z's downstairs positioned on the second floor, well armed, awaiting by orders. She can hit the ground running from six meters. And now, it's showtime. I used to get on my case about not finishing what I started. So I want to tell you what I've been up to all this time. I guess we should start with some background, right? Context is king. First, I'm relaying this log through Z, my first sim. And it's the first time I'm using Holomancer, the latest trend in logging. A man's spirit must be carefully buried. Suddenly, the light of the false dawn eclipsing my green sphere. I could see the venue where the conversation would play out. All around me were cherry blossom trees, their petals falling, brushing against my skin. In the distance, Mount Fuji sprawled in all its glory, rising into a midnight blue sky. The stench of rotting flesh was intense. It would have been unbearable to most humans, but for the creature, the odor simply carried information. It was a complex aroma. A wide variety of organic compounds were breaking down, the decaying matter outgassing. The creature was perched atop a small hill of corpses, wings spread, taking it all in, studying the putrid air. Less than a hundred meters away, five living men were approaching, slowly and quiet, heavily armed. Their fallen comrade had surprised the creature 32 minutes earlier. Susie stood unmoving for the first 72 minutes once she'd taken position. Both eyes fixed on the hangers on the other exit, an empty portal that led into the corridor, which extended 15 meters to a steel door they had not been able to open. Gav had assumed that this was the back door, but Susie thought it the opposite. This was the primary entrance, and the cemetery crypt assessed the lab, lab's posture. It didn't matter. The aperture was an unknown, and she had agreed to, this would be their opponent's most likely place of entry. Its head turned towards the sky, searching. Its mind reached through the Credo satellite and commanded 29,235 kilometers overhead, conferring with its army of WorldNet digital agents. A human in its position would be angry. A human in its condition would also be dead. It was already aware of 37 bullet wounds spread across its wings and body. More would likely be discovered with further investigation. Ask me again in a day or two. I'm only thinking of you, darling. Susie knew what funds Gav had, and what funds he didn't. Three days with all ten would drain his account to zero, no question. Mine is a part of Cornelian Crimson, murder on a holy day. Chikaru opened his eyes, felt a sharp ache in his back, as though he'd stepped off the curb awkwardly. That was impossible. 
there were no curbs. They stood at a crossroads of muddy tracks, gone were the university and the streets of Mansoor, which had been his home for 21 years. Scattered around him were crude homes of brick and clay. No, not crude, just not modern. Johnny Masters had a disease. He thought he was a wolf. 500 years ago, right-thinking people would have called him a werewolf and killed him. 100 years ago, psychiatrists would have diagnosed him, diagnosed him with lycanthropy, and tried to convince him he was, in fact, a man. But in this day and age, a man can make himself into a wolf if he has the money and the address of the right sort of black market surgeon. To date, Johnny had undergone 43 separate surgeries, ranging from the purely cosmetic to the highly invasive. His leg bones had been broken and lengthened to approximate the shape of a wolf's limbs. Artificial hair follicles had been implanted over his entire body to give him a coat of gray fur. Olfactory implants had been installed to heighten his sense of smell. These procedures, along with dozens of others, hadn't exactly turned him into the wolf that he saw in his mind's eye, but they went a long way toward making him happy. Jaeger turned away from the body lying on the floor. Frustrated with the fatigue weighing on his limbs and the labored beating of his heart, inconvenient symptoms of retreating youth, he finally had to admit that the assignments were wearing him down. That, of course, posed certain practical concerns. In his business, you work too far past your prime, and the next dead body may be your own. Implants and body mods may tack on an additional decade or two of usefulness, but he had no desire to become some kind of mechanized form. No, he would only accept a few more jobs. After that, a cushy retirement. He glanced back at the latest deposit into his retirement account. Derek Jones was the son of the famous Dr. Colton Jones, principal developer of Dome Technology. Jager remembered Derek from several Hollywood gala casts, a reckless playboy surrounded by beautiful women, genuine and simulacra, his handsome face mugging for the camera as he basked in the fame of his father's successes. Headlines surfaced. Some total inquirer snooped at uncovering Derek's fondness for a certain distraction, which he had hidden from his esteemed parents, distraction which they found repugnant. A second woman started to sing, her voice deeper, more resonant. This time, Jagger made out words. And despite the drone of the surging crowds, he could make them out clear. All of the lights on the earth had gone out, leaving the forgotten lights in the sky to blink down through the clouds of dust and smog on what was left of below. The silent drones had done their work and passed on. Between one breath and the next, they had ended the world. Maybe they had even ended. A dust-covered child, made up of rags and bones, uncurled from the shelter of the Sixth Creek Pillar. Gandhi Hain stared up at the stars with wide, bright, almond eyes. If you sell my eyes, we can get on a flight. We can go away somewhere. We aren't selling your eyes without manic eyes. They couldn't see the heat signatures of people approaching their base and lock it down. Without manic eyes, they couldn't find metal underground. Miyamoto Nuragami rattled down the steep incline of Seneca Street. The wheels of her roller skates splashed sparks off the rough pavement as she flew across the curb and twisted with a bounce onto Fifth Avenue. Mia's green tip ponytail fluttered like a pennant behind her, a flag of defiance flapping at anyone who might slow her down as she spun through the streets of Seattle. I am now all the destroying army Earth needs. Zero.